Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Today I'm going to be jointing and joining some tops and jointing and joining some backs. I may actually just be jointing them because that takes a long time in and of itself and I have a lot of them to cover. And I may be joining them on a different day in a different video. But we'll see how the day goes. So let's take a look at some of these tops and backs that I have. Okay guys, so I've got some German spruce here, which is really nice. Uh, I picked it up from Hearn Hardwoods, or uh, Hearn Tonewoods as they're now calling themselves. And uh, actually, all of this is from Hearn Tonewoods, I should mention. So this German spruce I really liked. I tend to select spruce uh, depending on what quality of grading I can get at that time. So what I mean by that is I'm not particularly invested in, you know, whether it's European uh, red spruce or the German spruce here or um, Sitka spruce or anything like that. I just look at the spruces sort of indifferently and look for the best grading of spruce that I can get at that time. And that tends to vary um, between visits. So sometimes I'll be able to find some really good uh, Adirondack spruce or red spruce or something like that. And then other times something else. Anyway, then over here I've got mahogany sets. These are for the student builds uh, for the next couple classes. And then I'm actually going to be switching later on in the year to Nicaraguan rosewood sets for the student builds. So I'm kind of doing a little bit of both, making a transition to more of the rosewood. Uh, and the rosewood will be with the spruce tops. So in the future with the student guitars, you'll see less of these all mahogany guitars and more of the rosewood spruce variety. And then lastly, way down here, this is just a little gift for myself, something fun for me to work on and for me to film and uh, carry you guys along for the ride with. And that's this zero coat back and side set that I really liked. And as you guys somewhat know, that I am somewhat obsessed with zero coat, zero coat. And so I'm doing another one. This is a really stunning set, has less of the, or none of the um, sapwood that was in the previous zero coat guitar that I built. Uh, but it just has a very uniform kind of landscape, cloudy landscape figure there that is just really, really cool. Love that piece. And that's going to be paired with a redwood top. Because also, as you guys may know from previous guitars I've built, I also have a little bit of a thing for redwood. So this is a nice piece. As you can see, these knots will be outside of where the actual guitar will be. So when you exclude the knots from your uh, vision there, you actually get a really nice high grade set. Okay, without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into all these sets here. No time to waste. Okay, so let's pull out the shooting board. There it is. And we're going to turn on the light box here. Actually, I won't need it right away, so I'll just keep it off for now, but just kind of wanted to show you that I have that activated on a switch right here. Very convenient, fun to use. We're going to use this to candle light the two pairs, the seams at the, uh, at the book matched pair. So let's pull out our first. We'll just go straight down the line here. It doesn't really matter where I start. So I'll start with the German spruce tops. So I always kind of look at where the good straight grain is first of all. So I could either do the book match this way, there I get a symmetrical uh, mirror image, or the opposite, which would be like this, still symmetrical. Um, but I have a little bit more of a waviness of the grain right about there, which I can avoid by doing it the other way. It's not a big deal. This would still be a, a fine set with it. But I'm going to go ahead with this. Now, 
This down here, you can see I'm going to have to plane away a lot of the center joint there to get past this open section here, which would be a concern on a narrower piece of wood here. But if I pull up my template, I can see I really have plenty of extra space here to work with so I can plane away to get rid of that gap in the middle. So this is where my book match is going to be. The grain lines are nice and tight and they don't squirrel around uh, like they do over in other areas around the edges. I'm going to speed through this first set here in hyper fast motion just to give you a general sense of the overall process. So the first thing I'm doing is just using my number five jack plane to prepare, rough prepare that joint. And then I'm going to follow that up by checking on the light box. And it's very often the case that I need to touch up that joint just a little bit with 220 grit sand, sandpaper on a uh, reliably true beam. And it just needs a little bit of that touch up from the 220 grit sandpaper um, to get that plain cut perfect. Okay, so this one's done. I'll trace my template on it and then put it in the done pile. Okay, so now we'll slow it down a bit and I'll talk a little more in depth about what I'm actually doing here on this next bookmatched pair. So first, just like before, I'm kind of deciding which side is my better book match, which I didn't mention before, but also a big part of that is looking for the more quarter sawn. Um, if one edge is more quarter sawn than the other, then that's going to be part of the selection process. Okay, now just like before, I'm going to use my number five jack plane. Right now, I'm actually using it just to align the two pieces together. I'm basically using the jack plane, the sole of the plane, as a straight edge to line up those two pieces before I clamp it down. Now, you don't need a clamp on your shooting board, but I find installing a toggle clamp like that is very helpful. Now I'm not going to get too much into it here, or I'm not really going to get into it at all here, but your technique with the plane matters. So you can really get a good and sometimes perfect joint just with the hand plane here if you have good technique. The character of that individual piece of wood also plays a little bit of a, a part in this. If the grain is uh, running out certain parts, it's going to actually cut differently along different parts of the board. So don't always blame your technique. That's why, for example, you see me using the sandpaper on the beam at the end often to correct just a little bit. Because even with good technique, uh, from one set to the next, you t tend to quite often get little gaps that just need a touch up on that beam. So as you can see, I still have a little gap here. So now I'm going to the 220 grit sanding beam. If you're new to this and you're just getting, your gaps are much larger, uh, you might start with one, 120 grit on a sanding beam or something like that um, in order to move the needle a little bit more. But if you can dial it in pretty close, you can always just use that 220 grit and that's a little nicer because then uh, you don't have to progress through the grits to get to 220 grit later on before you glue it up. So as you can see here, I'm just doing full length, even strokes at the moment. But depending on where I see the gap, I will often use the sanding beam selectively. OK, 
Okay, let's take it out again and have a look. Now that is a nice tight joint. What you can't see here is the sort of tactile sensation that you get from rubbing the joint together. So not only do I not see a gap, but I should be able to feel those two pieces sort of scraping against each other. You just feel a little bit of friction between the pieces. All right, so now I'm just using the jack plane to align the two pieces just like before, and that's just so I can put this piece of tape on the very ends, which holds the two pieces in alignment. And then I'm just gonna mark it up with my template. And also I'm going to cut, I'm sorry, not cut, I'm going to mark my angled line, which I'm going to cut later. And that is for the joining process on the joining board. So won't make sense necessarily right now, but when you see the full process, it will make more sense. By the way, if you want this sort of thing in more detail, you can check out my online course, Building an OM Acoustic, and I cover jointing and joining and much more in excruciating detail. All right, so here I'm marking that angled line that I mentioned. Okay, this set is ready to go. All right, so let's kick it back into high gear now and get these tops and backs done. In this particular case, you can actually see some of that selective sanding with the 220 beam that I was talking about. You'll notice that I'm applying the sanding pressure mostly to the ends of the board because that's where the board was touching when I candle lit it. Okay, so I didn't get everything done that I wanted to get done here as far as jointing all of these sets, but that's okay. I kind of figured that would be the case anyway. I'm going to pick up where I left off tomorrow, finish those up, and then I'll actually be joining the bookmatched pairs. But I'll save that for another episode. If you learned something here, please give this video a like and subscribe so you can be notified when I release a new DIY guitar making video. And if you want to really learn more, take one of my structured online courses at ericschaferguitars.com or register for a hands-on guitar building workshop here with me in Burnville, Pennsylvania.